G'day and welcome to our YouTube channel. This is One Palm Media. My name's Talon. I'm a filmmaker, director, cinematographer, editor. I do all sorts of stuff. Currently, I'm living in Tasmania and I really just wanted to start a channel. It's COVID times. I've got the isolation beard happening. Um, we wanted to bring you into our world and sort of share our adventures along the way. We're going to start with a series called One Palm Media Surf Adventures and um, that's going back through the archives so we'll start there and then we'll bring you more up to date with our current project which is here in Tasmania based around the guys that surf Shipstone Bluff. There's Thundercloud, there's all sorts of things that we've been doing and I can't wait to share it all with you but first and foremost check out this episode it's episode one and it's in the Cook Islands. One of the things that I absolutely love about my job is getting to go to new places and experience new cultures and check out new waves. Getting to go on these surf trips with some of the world's best surfers is just an added bonus for me. I, like, I love filming the, the best surfers in the world, but I think it's always just an excuse to get out and about and, and to explore the planet and see what's on offer. One of my good buddies is a photographer named Andrew Shield and he'd lined up the trip and we had Rye Craig with us, we had Jay Davies, we had Mitch Colborne and also Brent Dorrington from the Gold Coast. So it was a pretty rad crew and I knew that we were going to get some good footage over the course of the next few days. This particular trip was to the Cook Islands and that's sort of in the South Pacific Ocean, sort of close to Tahiti on the other side of Samoa but quite high up. It's open to a lot of south swells but it also gets north swells there as well but while we were there we didn't really get a good ground swell but we did manage to get some fun conditions. I remember one wave we surfed was a little right shallow right hander and um, the walk in and out from the lagoon was just covered in urchins and like you couldn't walk like two meters without like having 500 of them in front of you. It was good waves but the consequences if you came off or hit the bottom was pretty high and that kind of freaks you out a bit but no nah, we got pretty epic waves on that trip. It was a pretty little island too like it's the tropical paradise you think of like with turquoise water you know you got palm trees everywhere and the, the locals were super mellow we we had a little bit of time where some of the kids were out having a swim and um, they were so stoked to see us and um, you know we were stoked to be there but um, we really came for the waves and, and that was the big attraction for us. We arrived and we found this little setup that was pretty fun but it was also kind of tricky for the boys to surf. It, it suited the natural footers really well but the goofies like they were pretty much hating it. I would have been over it if I was on my backhand because it was short and sharp and really shallow. So like you could get in, but you'd have to really sneak quite quickly out of it. And um, you'd find yourself probably getting lipped in the head and stuff if you were on your backhand. I, I know I would have, but yeah, so I was pretty comfortable on my forehand for sure. I think Jay Davies really took to the, that little break so well. He just got so slotted on his forehand. Um, he was obviously a big unit and um, the kind of guy that really charges in, in barreling conditions. He can punt as well. He's a good all round surfer, Jay, and he has the ability to sniff out a tube like anyone on the planet. I mean, the waves weren't 
huge, it was like three, four foot maybe. Um, so Breno was just falling into these little holes that were just amazing for him. It just seemed like his bread and butter. It was just so hollow and perfect that he would just slip straight in and slip straight out pretty with ease. Breno is obviously from the Gold Coast, no stranger to a barrel, loves getting barreled at snapper behind the rock. But the way he charged that reef break, I was really impressed. But at the same time, I've seen him like at, off the wall and back door in Hawaii get some massive pits. So, you know, to be honest, I shouldn't have been as surprised as what I was. For Crakey though, I don't think he was having as much fun as the other guys. He was kind of struggling on his back end, but still managed to get a couple of nice waves. But all honesty, I think Crakey was just fanging for a, for a left hander somewhere. It would come down on you, like right in your face. Kind of like, just as you got through the barrel, it was just like this, where the whole wave would just do a full clamp and just like horseshoe around you kind of thing. And yeah, the reef was just intense. It was horrible. I remember one wave that Colborn got was pretty late and he was pretty deep and he just got chewed up in that thing. He came up and he was kind of coughing and yeah, he sort of got a little bit rattled. No one got really hammered on the reef, but um, there was definitely a couple of close calls. Being able to swim around in tropical waters like that for a job is pretty cool. There are moments though where it can be pretty dangerous and I remember one wave that Jay Davies caught. I was sort of sitting down at the end of the line near like the shallow bit where the boys were coming out of the wave and I just ducked under in time, just in time I think. It was pretty, uh, it was a pretty close call in the end but um, luckily I didn't get hit and um, it resulted in a pretty cool shot. So I was pretty stoked with that, but to be honest, that was more of a happy accident. Where we were surfing was right next to an airport. And I remember one afternoon we were out shooting and this massive plane came in and landed at the, at the airport just nearby, but it came over the top of the liner and I don't think I've ever been under a plane that close while I've been in the water before. So taking a shot of it was kind of cool, but uh, just the, the experience was something kind of really unique. These days I shoot in the water with a Red Dragon, but back on this trip I had my, my trusty old Panasonic HVX 200 and I had a little water housing for it made out of aluminium, so it was quite light and really easy to swim with actually. But um, slow motion wasn't such a part of the, the surfing game at this point in time. And we were obviously still concentrating on just getting cool shots and hadn't really worried too much about, oh, everything's gotta be slow-mo. But um, back then it was, it was still a lot of fun. And they, this is the early days of when I'd started to, to swim with a camera. Um, I was just learning pretty much every, every time I got in the water, it was a new experience for me. And, um, yeah, I had a lot of fun and it, it changed my life being able to do that for a job. All the South Pacific Islands have got the sickest vibe. They're, they're such a pleasurable place to be. You know, there's the South Pacific mana, which is the spirit of the South Pacific and that's possessed in everything from people to the waves to the, um, to the flowers, everything. Everything has mana. And um, yeah, the, the South Pacific people are just amazing. They're so friendly and really, really cool little towns. And one of the local guys, um, Dwayne, he was showing us around. He was actually a pretty good surfer too. And um, yeah, he managed to get a few good ones with us.
We found this other little wave, it was just next to a kind of like a river mouth and there were some boats going in and out and there were heaps of people around actually. It might have been like a little port town when I think about it. Um, but yeah, there was, there was this sort of big, the rocky kind of concrete pylon-y thing out the back that had a flag on it. And it made for a cool little backdrop actually, but the waves weren't amazing there, but I think the boys were just stoked to be going left and um, you know, get a few turns in rather than just be kind of pulling into that little barrel like we had before. I guess it was just, yeah, inevitable that we were all gonna be keen to leave the island because it just was, we were just surfing the same wave every day. There wasn't anything on offer other than that. Let's get the f out of here. Well, let's, I'll just quickly grab one piece to go. Piece of chicken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh, that's it. The junk yeah, food. Like Maddie, shit. Maddie, right back. Can get yous out tomorrow. Cool. Oh, yeah. You're a lion sack. Hey, lion. <laughs> the goofy footers were just stinging, absolutely stinging to go left. You wouldn't believe it. So much so that. Um, they pulled the pin on Cook Islands all together and they had heard that there was going to be a swell in New Zealand and we had to kind of go back through New Zealand so everyone changed their tickets and, and we headed for um, one of the longest left hand breaks in the land of the long white cloud, headed for Raglan. Yeah, it was horrible. So cold and the waves were so bad. I know the goofies were psyched but yeah, I was just... I don't think I got one good wave really. The conditions weren't amazing when we first got to Raglan, but um, considering it was a big, long, sort of winding left-hand wall, like the goofy footers were just eating it up. They were so stoked. Crakey and um, Mitch were just, they were straight out there. Didn't even really have wetsuits, actually. I, th I think that they were pretty uh, chilly out there, if I remember rightly. But um, I don't think I was in a hurry to get in the water out there. and. Um, you know, try and film from the water. So I just hung out on the land and um, yeah, just sort of got a bunch of shots of the boys doing some turns. Ragland's such a cool spot and um, you know, the boys were pretty stoked to actually go left for once, get a few waves in, but we ended up chasing another wave further up the coast. Um, there's a place called Piha, which has got a pretty cool little beach break and um, black sand beaches, but some punchy little waves and the boys are ripping out there. Personally, for me, um, the highlight was probably that little shallow right-hand reef break. Uh, some of the barrels were kind of cool and, um, you know, it was just nice to be out in the water. The urchins getting in and out were a bit of a pain in the ass, but um, the water was so warm, so clear, so tropical, so turquoise. I think turquoise is my favourite colour. Like, if I think relaxing times, I think that turquoisey water uh, just makes me feel good. You definitely look back and go, I had fun, I'm glad I went. Sure. It's another place I get to check off the list and I look forward to going back there again one day. So there you have it, that's episode one. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun being on those trips and we've got plenty more of that stuff coming down the pipeline for you. Um, if you did enjoy it, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel too. Like we're brand new at this and we're going to build up, we're going to get better, we're going to deliver lots and lots of content as we go. I've got an archive of hundreds of terabytes, so I can't wait to bring you all the, the highlights of that and share some of the trips and just show you what we do here. In general, I'm really excited about this little journey with YouTube and I can't wait to get the next episode up. We're going to be dropping this content regularly, like one a week, and if we can build up to two a week, we'll do that. But make sure you subscribe, hit the notification, geez, I can't speak. Hit the notification button and then that way you'll know when we've just dropped a new piece of content. Well, that's it from me. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Enjoy. Woo.